Welcome to your Zoom meeting training for yoga teachers. And I did a, a previous training in the past, but I'm making a new one because there's a few more features and things that I want to talk about that I recently realized and they are pertinent for yoga teachers. So here on the website, you can see it's zoom.us or zoom.com will direct you there as well. Uh, here's my recommendation as far as which kind of account you should have. So you can start with a free plan just to get started and to learn the ins and the outs. This is from a host's perspective. So of course you can join other people's meetings for as long as you want as a participant, but as a host, you have a few options. So the free plan is only going to allow you up to 40 minutes of total time on your group meetings. Of course, if you're just doing one-on-one -on -one meetings like personal or private clients, then you could stick with the free. But if you have two or more, you're limited to only 40 minutes. So I recommend going for the $14.99 per month per host. You're only one host. So $14.99 pro plan is going to give you exactly what you need as a yoga teacher. In fact, I use this also for my yoga studio and I have my teachers logging into my account to host the meetings. You don't need to worry about business or enterprise or any of that. That's like larger businesses and corporations, but the pro plan is going to be great for what you need for as a yoga teacher. You can have up to 100 participants. You can have a meeting up to 24 hours, which I don't think that you'll do, but I use this for teacher training, which often is four to five hours and there's 10 of us. Um, you can record to the cloud meaning if someone else or if you're you don't have you know if you're using your phone or a different device and you don't have space you can record to zoom and download them later and share them as well so you have up to one gigabyte of space on that so pro is what i go with you can click buy now and go through that process of setting up your account so i'm going to go into my account right now zoom and this is me so I've got all my information in there. It's all good. You can actually use the website. This is using, I'm using Chrome right now. You can use the website to schedule a meeting, join a meeting. Usually as a host, you want to schedule a meeting more than anything, but I actually like to use my computer app better. So you would download the app or the application. And since I'm on a Mac, it's at the bottom of my screen. And I'm gonna go through all of the things on my app rather than on the computer or on the internet. Uh, of course, yes, you can use the internet, but you will need to download the app if you're going to actually be doing Zoom, so you'll have it anyway. So I'm gonna open that up. So this is what the app looks like on my computer. You can also get it for a mobile device and it looks slightly different. There's more functionality on a computer and I do recommend using a computer or a laptop if you have one that's going to give you the most functionality and the ability to change more things. Um, joining from your phone or using your phone is a great backup if you don't have availability to a computer. So you have a couple options here. You can start a new meeting right away. You can join someone else's meeting as a participant share your screen, we don't have to worry about, or schedule. And as a yoga teacher, we're probably mostly going to schedule because we want to schedule a class, maybe next week or tomorrow or whenever we're doing a class. So I'm gonna hit the schedule button. Actually, I want you to see all of this. So I'm gonna move this down a little. At the top, you can also see home, chat, meetings, and contact. So I'm gonna hit schedule and schedule a meeting. So we're gonna call this yoga class test and test <laughs> and the date right now it's 4 20 today so let's just say i want to do this class at 6 p.m tonight so i'm going to do a one-off class and it's going to be six to seven so that's what people would see when they sign up however if you want to just use one link for all of your classes which i also recommend make this a recurring meeting so the date gets chopped off um, I do that for my yoga classes because I don't want to have to deal with sending multiple links to multiple people, multiple days and different classes. So I have one link that I only change on my website and I make it a recurring meeting. And you'll see that when, when I get into my, uh, my meetings, you'll see my Ashes Yoga virtual classes. So if you're just doing one class and you just want one specific link, then choose a date and a time. If you want to use the same link over and over, choose recurring meeting. Generate ID, meeting ID, generate automatically. I say generate automatically. Using your personal meeting ID, it's 
just generate it automatically. Leave that as it is because it will give you a unique link. Whether or not, or not you require a password is up to you. There's been some Zoom bombing, so it's automatic that this is checked to require a password. I would leave that on actually. You don't actually need your participants to type in a password, but it will make the link to join, the URL to join a lot longer because the password is included in the link. So I'll show you that too. So require a meeting password. I will leave that checked. You can choose your own password, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, so host video, I want that on. I want my participants video on. And for audio, I choose computer audio because I don't really have a lot of people, you know, calling in to join on audio. So I keep it on computer audio so that you don't see all these phone numbers pop up. And again, I can show you the difference there. Um, most people are joining on their phone or computer. So they're going to just use their computer audio, not dialing in on a specific phone. So it's not a phone conference. And then calendar, this is just for you. Uh, I choose other calendars because I actually don't want them on my calendar, so it'll just, I'll just pass that. Uh, we've got some advanced options down here. Enable the waiting room, that is also automatically checked, but you can uncheck that, this and we can actually change that back and forth within Zoom. Waiting room is sort of like a front lobby, right? So someone's waiting to get checked in and you have to approve them. So it'll pop up that someone um, someone is waiting to join and you have to hit accept. So on or off, again, that's up to you if you want to sign people in or if you're okay with anybody joining who has a link. I have it off. I don't mind people joining in middle of class, but uh, I'm not able to accept them once I get started and if I'm not on my computer. So I have it off, but you can turn it on. It creates a safer environment for your class and allows you to check in the people that are joining. Enable join before host, keep that off. You wanna be the first one joining. Mute participants on entry. I also do not mute everybody right away because I wanna check in with them. I wanna be able to talk with them and then I mute them afterwards right before I start the recording. And then these other two, you probably don't want either. Um, the authenticated users, don't worry about that. Automatically record meeting, I would say no because I usually start the recording right when I start the class and I don't want to record that check-in or that, hey, how are you doing? Um, because sometimes it can be a little bit personal and I don't want other people in the future to see like the check-in process. So I leave that all off. And then you can hit schedule. So we're gonna schedule this one. Your meeting has been scheduled. Your meeting has been scheduled, awesome. Here's my invitation. So notice this link is longer. Uh, typically, it would without the password, it would be just this, the zoom.us. slash j slash the number of your ID, the randomly generated number. So that's without the password. With the password, you'd have to copy and paste this whole link so that someone can't randomly come into your uh, meeting by generating you know, a, a random 10 digit number, which is very rare, but it does happen. Um, so it has that password. And if someone did join just by using this link that didn't have the password attached, they would have to input a password. So you'll copy and paste this link to anyone who needs to join. Um, if, and that's about it. And that's, that's what I do anyway for our classes. So password or no password, I don't have all the rest of the numbers to dial in. If you had telephone options, it'd, it'd have a bunch of other numbers, but this link is all you're worried about. So if you want to copy and paste this whole thing, you can. Uh, meeting ID and password is used if someone is joining from the Zoom app and you click that button that said join, you'd have to type in the meeting ID and the password, or you could just click and it automatically brings you up to Zoom on your application or whatever you're using, whether that's a phone or a computer. All right, so yoga class test tonight at 6 p.m., Zoom link and meeting ID, great. I'm going to close at the bottom here. It does have options to copy the invitation to my calendars or copy it so I can paste it somewhere. I just hit close because I'm not gonna copy it yet. And then back up here, I go to meetings. Now in here, this is where my personal meeting ID is, which I could have people join. And here's that dial by location. So if you wanna dial in all that, I don't use my personal meeting ID a whole lot. I usually just make a recurring meeting. So today this meeting is not recurring. It's singularly at 6 p.m. Show the meeting ID and I can copy and paste this to whoever my participants are. I can hit copy invitation and it copies this entire thing. And my recurring meetings are down here. 
Ash's yoga studio virtual classes. I've got my virtual vinyasa and yoga teacher training are all recurring because I use the same link for those meetings. So my yoga classes all recur and I use this exact link. If you wanted to join, I copy and paste this and I only change it in one place on my website. And so I direct people to that website to, to click to join to enter the class. So our class test, let's just say six o'clock and now we wanna be at this meeting. So I'm going to start and you'll see me pop up and let's go for it. All right, I just popped up and it'll pop up with this box, join with computer audio, yes. We'll go through all of those options. So here I am, we're in the Zoom and I changed a few settings and I will show you how to change those as well. So one thing that I changed, and you can see in the top here, I've got this, um, this little clock. I didn't, that's one thing I wanna share with you because I didn't realize that's there. And it's good to know as a yoga teacher, if you don't have a clock handy next to you, you can then go and see how long and what duration you have been on your chat or on your Zoom class. So I have myself set up here. If I were doing a class, I'd be set up here and I'd make sure that I could see, you could see me, I'd step back and be like, all right, can you see all of me? I may have to tilt my camera. So I get on a few minutes early to make sure everything's good. And I'll show you what a participant looks like because I'll join from my phone as well. Um, so you have to move your mouse in order for this black bar at the bottom to show up. So when you move your mouse away from it, it's going to, going to disappear and you go, okay, where's my stuff? Move your mouse over the screen and that's where it shows up. I'm going to go through this black bar a few things, but first I'm going to join from my computer or from my phone so that you see what an additional person is like. So if I go to Zoom, mm -hmm. join my meeting. What was my meeting? See, this is where I'm on my phone. I'm going to join by typing in the ID. 931-5588-8816 and the password, join. And the password, it pops up with a password is 071953. I've never actually joined in this way. Join with video, yes. And I don't want to join with my audio. I'm gonna cancel that where it says do you want to join with your audio? I'm gonna cancel that because if I have two devices, I'm gonna flip this, if I have two devices and they're both connected to audio, you get this really crazy echo. So what you're seeing here is you know, multiple of me and um, one's Ashley, one's Ashley Hagen, whatever. I'm joining from my phone as a participant and I'm joining on my computer as the host. So if I t go up here to the corner, it'll say gallery view, or speaker view. So gallery view, you're going to see all the little squares up to, I think, um, 25 of them. Um, so you can see sometimes it's like tons of little squares. If you go just to speaker view, you're going to see whoever's talking. Now I usually go up here into, this is my host view, so speaker view. I pin the video, and if I had more people on this chat, I could spotlight the video, which means that it's just me showing up on the speaker view. And you want that because when you're recording it, when and if you record this, you don't want to be recording in gallery view and viewing everybody else because you can get in sort of trouble with that because you're not getting waivers, or maybe you are, but probably not getting waivers or signed releases for people, for you to use people's images or pictures or photos of them in any kind of public means. So if you're recording it, if you're recording it just to, um, just to share with the participants, that might be fine, but you can't use it publicly. So when I record, it's really just on this screen. If, even if you pin the video and go to gallery view and you hit record, you're still going to record all of the little um, squares. So we want to keep that on speaker view. And there are, of course, two ways that you could go about teaching. Number one, you can do it as a participant or a demo as you talk through it. Now that's gonna be a little bit more challenging physically for you. Or you could watch your students and be that sort of one-on-one -on -one and maybe it's not recorded, but you're watching them on gallery view and, and tell, talking them through less than demoing. So if you have to demo, you step back and you 
do your demo and then you come back and watch them again. So that's a great way to do this if you're doing more of like a therapeutic or restorative or more of a one-on-one -on -one training. Because I teach vinyasa flow, I typically just demo through um, the practice and that's what I prefer to do. So I wanna make sure that you can see all of me and that everything is good to go. Uh, so we got that. And notice, I'm gonna actually show you this. So gallery view, notice I'm putting my right hand up, but it looks different from my computer to my phone. And I wanted to show that too, because on my computer, it's mirroring me. On my phone, it's showing me as if my right hand is up, like if, if you were to turn around, this is like correctly as, anyway, it's, it's different. So as a yoga teacher, this mirrored view, what I have on my laptop is awesome. So if it's mirrored and I say lift your right hand, it's gonna look the opposite for them and they'll lift their right hand. So it's easier for you as a teacher to just use your right and left that you have and they're looking at you. I say lift your left hand, I lift my left hand and they'll copy because it's mirrored so it's flip-flopped, right? You can change that though. So if you are used to mirroring and when you say lift your right arm, you're actually lifting your left arm as you would in front of a yoga class, you would come down here to your video options, go to video settings and in it you will see you will see some options, these settings. So I have my, my webcam going. I can choose which camera. So let's actually change that. And I'm a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go back to my webcam. You can choose original or a widescreen. You can choose, I just enabled my HD. It's typically not enabled. It's a little bit more grainy, but because I think I have pretty good internet. Oh. <laughs> just as I say that that popped up. I'm gonna enable back to HD. You, If you do not have great internet, don't do HD. If you have lots and lots of participants, HD might not be so good. So don't worry too much about video quality. I just thought I'd try it for today. And here's where you can mirror your video. So this, if I uncheck it, it actually looks like the way it would actually be set up. So if I walk in, the door is to the right, this outside is to the left. This is how the, the studio actually looks. However, when I mirror it, it's helpful for me to say, use your right hand anyway. So you'll have to play with the difference in that. Um, touch up my appearance, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not even too concerned because I'm not usually up close. And then you have a couple other settings as well. I did check this as well, spotlight my video. You can hide non-video participants. And then just look through them and see um, what you would want. And same with, with um, general audio video, just going into these settings. Uh, let's see, ask me to confirm when I leave a meeting. So when you hit end meeting and they'll say, are you sure you wanna end? And you can turn that off. I like, this is what I just checked to show my meeting duration. That shows the time in the upper right corner so you know how long that you've been going. And anything else, so you can play with you know, do a skin tone reaction. You can play with the, the dark or the light themes, just your preferences. And then audio also is something to be aware of. So if we cancel out of this, cancel out of this and you go to your audio settings, it'll pull up that same dialog box here. Uh, so you can use different Let's check out different settings. Press and hold space key to temporarily unmute yourself. I had no idea that was an option. I think that's so cool. You can decide how, how loud you want yourself. You can test your speakers, test your mic if it's not working. Testing. Test. Yep, see, it'll test to see if it works. And anything sort of else, just go through these settings and see if there's things that you want to change. I don't know anything specific besides knowing that mirror my video is there for you as an option. So I turned myself off uh, or my phone booted me off. Must be the Wi-Fi, which is fine. I'm gonna turn my, I'm back on HD, awesome. So let's just go down here a little bit more. So you can mute yourself. I am now muted. 
you can stop the video. And I have a photo here. That's something that you can change. But oftentimes, they'll just say your name, like Ashley Hagen. Start that again. Down here is security. Here's where you can I do a couple things as a yoga teacher too. So in the meeting, you can enable that waiting room. So let's say you hop on early and you're like, all right, I wanna make sure that I check in who's getting here. So I click enable the waiting room. I've enabled it. I can turn it off. Lock meeting is great when you know you've got all your participants and you don't want anyone else joining. So once you get started, you might want to lock it, saying no one else can join, even if they had the password and the and the meeting ID, they can't join anymore. So it's locked, it's done. So you might do that right before you start. You're like, I'm recording, locking the, the meeting. Everyone that's here, that's supposed to be here is here, done. I typically don't do that as well, but that might be the case for your, uh, for your class. And you can choose whether or not people can rename themselves. Um, I usually, like I have people, the, the teachers that are using my account for classes, um, they, can re they should rename themselves so it doesn't pop up as Ashley Hagen. Participants. Now, you can't see my second participant here, but this little box will pop up on the side, participants. And before I get started with my teaching, I always hit the participants tab and I mute all. Mute all. And I say, great. Um, I can allow participants to unmute themselves, but once I hit that, if anyone else joins, they're also going to come in as muted. So you don't have to then mute everybody as they join. Um, but I do that after the check-in, after I've said hi to everybody, and then I hit mute all. Current and new participants will be muted. And then I'll also, I'll go over here to record on this computer or to record. So that's next. Then I hit record and I get going, but I'll go in that, over that in a second because we'll keep going left to right. So participants, I mute the video or I mute all, or at the end I can unmute all and then say, hey, how'd it go? Or how are you doing? Um, the chat box is going to pop up to the side as well. And this is where you can type in, hey everyone. And you can, this will, will turn up as blue. You can type to everybody or to, minimize that or to a singular person privately so you can have a private conversation within this chat um, chat place and this is also where you could put in your spotify playlist you can't really put music to videos and you shouldn't it's going to get muddled if you're trying to play an external um, external music source into your microphone it's going to sound really off and there's also copyright issues so if you try to upload it or share it anywhere else it's it's you're not supposed to do that. Best way to go around that music is to uh, share a playlist and say, here's the playlist for the day, um, push play when we get started, and Spotify is probably the best place to go. A lot of people have Spotify or can um, click on the link and be able to get that music. All right, so you can say, here's my playlist. And then you type it in. Share screen is not something that you're going to use a whole lot. However, if you are doing a workshop or something, whiteboard is where you could draw on it and help you know, show people pictures and things. Um, you can show them a screen share of, let's just do that one, and it pops up that I'm now sharing my screen on Zoom. And I've got this little me up here and this bar up here so I can pause or stop so I can write on it. Uh, I'm going to stop the share, go back to my regular. Typically, you don't use that in a regular yoga class, but you might for a workshop. Reactions, that's not something I do a lot, but you know you can put a thumbs up to whatever you're doing or if you're in um, a participant, you're like, I like what you're saying. And these advanced stuff, you don't really need a whole lot. So if I were to pull this out, you'll see record is on here. Record. So I record, you can choose to record to your computer or the cloud. The cloud is going to only go up to one gigabyte. So you can maybe record, I think uh, an hour long yoga class is usually between 150 and 200 megabytes if it's not HD. So I typically, when I have the option, I record to my computer because I have a lot more space. Recording to the cloud also allows you to share that direct link to people. So recording on your computer, you'd have to re-upload or upload it someplace else. 
I do that to YouTube. So I upload to YouTube as an unlisted video and only people with the link can have it. It depends on your internet speed and how much you want to get into it. If you're recording to the cloud, yes, you can share directly. Recording to the computer, you'll have to upload it elsewhere after it's done. So you can choose one of those. And when you hit record, if I just record, let's say I'm recording to this computer, it comes up with this recording box up at the top. So I can pause it, I can stop it. And as soon as I'm done, I hit stop. I do this right when I start and right when I end. And right when I start the practice, I hit record and I reintroduce myself. Even if I have only one or two people here, I say, hey everyone, I'm Ashley, or hey, how are you? My name is Ashley and today we are doing yoga flow, 60 minutes, yada, yada, yada. So talking about your introduction and I even tell the participants ahead of time, like I'm gonna be recording this. So once I hit record, you will hear me do my introduction again. It's just, it's mostly for the replay viewers. All right, let's do this. I hit record and say, hey, I'm Ashley. Welcome to Ashley's Yoga Studio. And today we're working on this type of class. You'll need these props and I, let's get started. So I'm gonna stop that exit out, close, close my chat, and you can make it full screen, small screen. Um, the downside about just being on speaker view, uh, if you're recording it, is that you can't see anyone else really. You're not looking at them, so it's not going to be as beneficial for the students, but the biggest thing for me as I'm doing these Zoom classes is the accountability. So as I'm teaching, I'm trying to be as safe as possible when I offer modifications and adjustments. And I know a lot of my audience and I know what their struggles are or if they have any injuries. So I'll make sure to mention how to adjust their practice for what they need. And I'm mostly talking to the people that are joining me, but having that recording is nice to have for those who didn't participate or who wasn't able to, or if they are part of my membership site, that's where all the recordings are housed. And that is pretty much Zoom in a nutshell. Um, you can also, let's actually, I wanna join again. Let's see if I can join this again. Um, you can rename yourself. So you can't see, copy this. I'm gonna text it to myself because you can easily text things, right? And then join it. Hmm. Well, it's not working. Oh, here we go. Ashley. All right, that's not gonna work. I'm not gonna be too concerned about that, but you will have three dots up, up top. You can rename yourself. You can pin your video. I think I went through that spotlight your video. Um, there's a few other things in the little three dot section. But what you need to know mostly is that you have to highlight your mouse over your screen in order to see the black bar at the bottom. Check on your audio options, your video options, make sure your video is set up appropriately. Right now my camp computer is sitting up on a bunch of yoga blocks. So uh, it doesn't matter too much what you have for equipment. If you've got a computer, you have enough. You have your laptop, you're good to go. So uh, lighting is a thing too. Make sure that people can see you. A couple other tips when it comes to doing videos on Zoom is to make sure you're offering eye contact. So eye contact for video is looking into the camera lens and smile so that you come off as you know, approachable. Being approachable and being um, hopefully coming off as a nice person and because you are, because being an approachable and safe place for people to practice with. Uh, it can be harder through video than it is in person. So you have to be a little bit extra, a little extra of what you want to portray um, beyond what, what you want. Just like that saying that the camera ad, adds 10 pounds, which I mean, whatever, uh, the camera adds 10 pounds. It also minimizes your, um, your personality. So to bring that a, a little bit more, you've got to be extra. And another tip is to not wear black. So if, <laughs> look at my legs. I'm wearing black pants right now, but if I step back into a lunge, it's less likely that you're able to notice which leg is back. So you can't see as many of the shadows, especially if you're not in a brightly lit, 
lit space. So wearing black is not suggested for yoga videos. Wearing black, people say to wear black because it's more slimming and it also hides you, which is, that's, that's the point of wearing black is it hides you, but you don't want to be hidden as a yoga teacher when you're supposed to be demoing your classes and people need to see your body. So avoid baggy clothes, avoid the color black, um, stripes are fine as long as they're not too thin. I had a shirt once that was like really tiny lines and it just was like, whoa, it was like an optical illusion on video. So just check out what your clothes look like, nothing too distracting, distracting, put your hair back. Um, I've got a couple different audio options here, but I don't wanna go too much into those because use what you have and work with what you've got before, um, before you do, you know, before you upgrade. So teach what you know, Use what you have, keep learning, and upgrade later. That's our Zoom training. So I hope that was helpful. Um, try it out. You can always hop on with a phone and a computer and like play around with it, or try it out with one person. Just say, hey, do you wanna do a Zoom call with me? I just wanna see how this works. And if you wanted to do it by yourself and see how the audio and video quality is, just record yourself through Zoom and then re-listen to it or listen and look at that playback. Uh, afterwards to see if the quality is there or that you would like, if you need to make adjustments and um, if you need to set up anything differently. All right, so Zoom 101 for yoga teachers. It's all about setting up those settings and playing around with it a little bit. Audio settings, video settings, checking out the, that black bar at the bottom for all of the stuff that you need to know when you're actually in your Zoom meeting. And then I'm gonna hit end meeting and this is that like dialogue box. So I can actually turn this off, um, but I didn't. I'm going to end, I can leave it. And if I leave it, it'll still continue just without me. Um, but I'm gonna end meeting for all. Boop. And it will show up with a converting meeting recording. This only happens if you record to your, uh, to your computer. On your phone, you're not going to be able to record to your computer. You can record to the cloud and that converts within the cloud. So this dialogue box, this this box will not pop up. And then see, look, there's my recording. Let's check it out. This computer, it comes up with this recording box up at the top. So I can pause it, I can stop it. Great, so that's our Zoom classes. Um, recorded, it will come up as, uh, it will show you where they're at in your computer or if they're on the cloud. So I like this app on your computer to do that. And that's at the bottom. And if I cancel out of that, cool. I'm back to my, my internet browser, schedule a meeting, join a meeting. Same thing you can do from here. You still need to download the app though on your computer or your phone in order to join. So these are the same settings if you wanted to do it from an internet browser same everything. So that $14.99 plan is probably going to be the best, actually is the best for yoga teachers if you want to host more than one-on-one -on -one meetings and you want more than 40 minutes. And then you just go in and play around with your Zoom. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'm happy to help you out with recording to Zoom.